Welcome to the Quarantine Players. Tonight, we're reading Don Juan. Juan has proposed to Francesca, but he's unsure of his true commitment. Francesca decides to use a grad school film exercise as an excuse to meet his exes and find out everything there is to know about, the perspe about her prospective fiance. In doing so, she uses the audience as a sounding board to gain insight into the relationship. Meet Scott Olson, our director. Hello everyone, my name is Scott Olson and I um, I'm very pleased to be directing the show and I live outside of Washington DC in a town called Gainesville, Virginia. We're going to ask the rest of the actors to unmute and introduce themselves in the order of which they show up on the character list. So we will start with Francesca, please. Francesca, she's a woman between the ages of 18 and 25. She's currently attending film school and is dating Juan. She's smart, inquisitive, and yet naive. She yearns to understand love. Juan. Juan, he is a man between the ages of 35 to 50. He's a hotel owner and has fallen in love with Francesca. He's wise, a bit traditional, and is finally ready to settle down. Isla. Isla is a woman between the ages of 35 and 50. She's in the hotel business. She strives for nothing less than perfection. She's resilient, cold, and wanders the world like a predator. Mary. Mary, she's a woman between the ages of 30 and 40. Unfortunately, she is still in love with Juan. She is a desperate romantic who is brave enough to face her feelings and rejections. Ren. Ren is a man between the ages of 35 and 45. He's about to be married soon and yet cannot shake off that time with Juan. He needs closure and he will get it today. And Quinn. Quinn, she's a woman between the ages of 35 and 50. A family hardship has spun her life for the worse and now she has returned for a possible chance at redemption. And she is the one that got away. Thank you. To our audience members, we welcome you tonight. And we would like to remind you that this is an interactive show, meaning that at some point during the show, our character Francesca will say, pause. And then she will turn to you and ask you a question. We would like you as the audience to help her answer those questions and talk to her like a real person. Act one, lights fade up on Francesca with a remote, having turned on a camera on a tripod. Hi, my name is Francesca. I'm a hyper analytical 25 year old millennial Afro-Dominican, cisgender, pansexual, democratic, socialist, hopeless, romantic, feminist, agnostic, recovering alcoholic, meat eater, animal activist, bibliophile, studying filmmaking, hoping to be a participatory document documentarian. So needless to say, I'm always confused. But believe me, when I say that I always know when I'm confused and that I'm never confused about being confused. Um, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so you may be wondering why it is that you're seeing me. I was born and raised in New York City. I'm the only child to a mother who's a doctor and a father who worked at the UN in capacities. I'm still trying to understand because of them, I've always been fascinated with people's obsession with love. I think it stems from the reality of truly knowing that we're alone. I wanted to explore further on what relationships mean and how they, for lack of better words, change us. I met Juan last year when I began grad school. He was sitting in the park as I was shooting B-roll and he kept looking into the camera. I walked over explaining the situation and he said, I was looking at you. I didn't buy it, but I agreed to date anyway, um, just so that he could stay in the shot. Our first date was in this construction site where he took this hoist to the top floor. He had blankets, a heater and Chinese takeout. We've been seeing each other ever since. He's lived quite an interesting life. The more of his friends I meet, the more stories I hear. So I've decided to do my mini doc directing exercise on him. So 
side note, I know this doesn't pass for a, a Bechdel test, but you can't be surprised when this play itself is written by a man. Anyway, I know you believe that my film will do well um, and you'll be a little biased, but I have an agenda. And as backup, you're all gonna be my conscience, okay? So when I say pause, we're gonna talk. Play. Lawn enters. Where's your tie? I'd rather not. You don't like the color? I prefer my neck to be free. Gotcha. Uh, remind me why I agreed to this. Uh, love. You mean I, I didn't bargain for anything? Not this time, which I was surprised by. Then I demand renegotiation. I can't think of anything you don't have already. I can think of one thing. Really? I want you to marry me. We've talked about this. And I've answered all your questions. I've given you everything else. I know. I want this. Juan, you're at a point where it makes sense. I'm still in grad school. It's an age thing. No, I didn't say that. What did you say? I'm saying that I'm in love with you and no one has made me want to be a more loving person. But? But, you're, but you've been with many women. And that bothers you? Don't assume me. I apologize. I don't know how committed you would be. You're serious. I, I've never felt this way about anyone. Ugh, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, I'm sure you've said this to all the women. I never proposed to any of the others. Not even close? Not even close. N n not to any of them? Ten. <laughs> no. Right. I'll, I'll give you an answer after the shoot. He's one to a warm. chair. Oh, it feels like the hot seat. <laughs> Didn't you commit any, did you commit any heinous crimes? Depends on who you ask. Uh, I look terrible in this shirt. You, you know, you're actually kind of sexy. <laughs> Men are so easy. Ouch. <laughs> Francesca focuses the camera and preps. There you go, capturing my soul. I had no idea you were this suspicious. I mean, superstitious. Juan gestures the sign of a cross and a bow, a bow and a string of other things, most of them made up. I'm definitely editing that out. <laughs> Francesca walks over and grabs a notepad filled with writing. Feel free to talk and use words as you normally would, but try to keep your responses to the point. Not brief, but to the point, okay? Yes. Also, for the sake of consistency, incorporate the question with, within your answer. What is your name? Juan Irizarry. My name is? My name is Juan Irizarry. How old are you? I am 40 years young. Tell me more. Like? Where were you born? You know where I was born. They don't. I was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico. I moved to New York City when I was 14. Okay, how was your childhood like? It was, uh, well, who remembers those things? Recall your mother? She was a woman of virtue and she held it in two places, her heart and her belt. I was her prince. And your father? Uh, he stood by himself on many matters. We were all by his deathbed, but he still died alone. You had a little sister. I don't want to talk about that. But you've told me before. Yes, but now I'm telling them. Do you believe in magic, ghosts, miracles? No. Do you believe in God? No. Do you believe in love at first sight? No. Do you believe in love? 
Indubitably. Are you in love now, Juan? Yes. Does he treat you well? She does. Have you ever fell out of love with her? Once. When? When she made me make a film. <laughs> You're such a clown. <laughs> Aren't you going to ask what I do for a living? Don't rush me. Okay. What do you do for a living? I am the owner of Pancho Villa. It is a play with words. It is a building down on Grand Street where each floor is a villa. Keep showing off. Uh, on the first floor is the Pancho Villa lobby. This is where guests can enjoy the restaurant or the lounge. On the second floor is our first villa named Don Quixote. It is Mexican themed with murals of him and windmills. The third is called Zorro. <laughs> there are hidden treasures for guests to find. And on the fourth floor, this is my favorite, the Don Juan Villa. The rooms are covered in flower arrangements, fresh fruit, silk sheets, and love letters. Doorbell buzzes. I'll get that. Nope, stay put. I don't want you to ruin, ruin the shot. Do you trust me? Uh, yes. Isla enters. Any reason I should be ringing the bell before I walk into the open door? Uh, yes, yeah, to warn us. <laughs> Isla sees Juan, Juan sees her. A smile comes over them. They meet halfway and hug each other tightly. Francesca watches like a scientist staring into a Petri dish. Isla, it's been so long. It certainly has. What are you doing here? I was invited by Francesca. Uh, you mean Francesca. <laughs> she invited you. For your documentary about the opening of your new hotel. <laughs> um, this part of the documentary will explore Mr. Izzati's past and how he got to where he is today. Right. Right. Let's sit. Francesca points Isla to her chair, and Juan leans into Francesca's ear. What are you doing? Francesca gets free. She reviews the camera shot. You look good. Uh, so do you. Francesca peeks out from behind the camera. I told you. You told me what? That you'd make it. I'd love to see the place. Well, I'd love to show it to you. So for the first portion, I want to ask Isla a few questions and you can interrupt. You can't interrupt or say any jokes, okay? So the first few are general questions about you and then I'll dig deeper. With a spoon. More like a shovel. What is your name? My name is Ilsa Rasirio Blancet. Uh, mind if I ask your age? I'm 48. Where were you born? I was born in Barcelona and raised there until I was 16. I moved to America when I, with my older sister. First it was the Bronx, then Queens, and then Tribeca. You really live in Tribeca? The Freedom Tower is outside my window. Well, it must be some apartment. Loft. Well, uh, the people, the people traffic must suck. I have a Benz. Still though, the car traffic. My chauffeur drives. The parking. Private garage. Gas spit. What? I, um, what do you do for a living, Isla? I'm an architect and co-owner of a construction company that builds skyscrapers. You? I'm a, a normal human being. Do you remember when you uh, first met Juan? I, I don't remember the exact moment. Do you? I don't. Well, we had seen each other in passing a few times, and I, and I think we began talking because of of the volunteer work we did in Ecuador. The program we were in needed teachers 
to instruct foreign languages, and, and he spoke Spanish and I spoke French. Uh, what do you remember about him? Oh, I could tell he was going to be someone. He had good ideas and faith in people to believe in his good ideas. And how long before you two dated? What? A few months? Almost a year, I think. That long? No. I never chased someone so much in my entire life. <laughs> How cute. Oh, cute is for young people. Every concierge from Columbus Circle to Battery Park knew our names. <laughs> we don't need details like that. <laughs> we made up reasons to see each other and stayed in each other's apartments for months at a time. Isn't that dating? It was never official. <laughs> Sounds like you had everything but him. I never made it official. Well, what, what did he do to you? It wasn't him. It was me. I wasn't ready for him. First, she told me that she never had a boyfriend before. <laughs> then she said to me that she was religious and her family oh. would never <laughs> approve. And then the last one was, was that she was promised to another man. That <laughs> sounds so crazy. You were. <laughs> what finally <laughs> happened that made it official? Oh, I got cancer. <laughs> oh, I was diagnosed with leukemia and was told by my physician that it was, it was grim. And I realized that my dream of going to grad school and becoming an architect was never gonna happen. So my perspective changed. And how did this make you feel? Well, I, I was devastated, of course. She finally gave me a chance. It was bittersweet. <sighs> they called her my grapefruit. Can I tell you something? What? I knew when you cried to sleep. I didn't mean for you to know. Oh, he's an ugly crier. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> it actually made me feel better. How? It was like you were doing all the crying for me. Oh, I'm, I'm glad I did. When I went into remission, I told him to go start his business and I went off to grad school. You broke up with him? Yes. Oh, why? We didn't need each other anymore. That's not what you told me. I said that we were two alike. You no longer had a woman to keep you from failing at your business, and I no longer had a man that kept me from my ambitions. Uh, pause. <laughs> this cold cunt thinks she's better than me. She can barely keep her nose down. Uh, what else should I ask? Like, what is it like seeing each other now? You want to go first? Ladies first. The lady requests that you go first. Well, Isla taught me that in life, some things don't always need answers. <laughs> Are you married? You certainly hounded me about it. Not yet. I thought so. Well, you did. Yes. Are you married? God, no! <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? Oh, if him and I are as alike as I think we are, understand that we are tigers. <laughs> Do you think he's incapable of loving? Is that what I said? Anyone is capable of loving, but are they capable of staying in love? Are you friends? I am. Have you ever been in love? I am. Has he changed you? Yes. Then you are a pleaser. One is not like that. Would you get me a drink, please? Juan walks. In a glass with ice and a lemon with a straw. Juan exits. Isla walks over to Francesca. I need a favor, Francesca. Francesca. Of course. 
Could you film me saying something to Juan? Sure. Francesca sets up the camera toward Isla. Isla fixes herself. Juan, I asked Fran to show this to you in a few weeks. Look, don't take it out any anger toward her for my wish. I'm going back to Barcelona to spend my last day. My cancer returned. It was good seeing you. Thank you, Fran, for allowing me that. Look, to, re to return the favor, allow me to give you some advice about him. Why would I need that? He will only ever love himself. Isla exits. Where's Isla? He had to go. Well, after all that? Did you see how she was? How she carried herself? Well, she's a special woman. She's going to die without anyone. And so are you. That's rude. I have you. Are you sure? You don't rather be a tiger? My God, Francesca, is that it? You're, you're using this film project so you could ask me if I'll commit to you? I asked you to marry me. She said that you hounded her about it. We only talked about it, I swear. I guess I have to believe you. And how did you find her? I, I found this. I was looking for that. Uh, did you read it? Every page. This is private. I don't need to know the details about your conquests, but why did you write them down? <laughs> I, know you, I know you're young, but I never thought you would do this. Why did you write them down? Well, I, at first, it was a thing to do. I kept history. That you showed friends, I'm sure. I want to write a book. A man's journey toward manhood and marriage, or, or, or something like that. Specifically dealing with sex, nonetheless? This isn't erotica. Oh, like you don't enjoy reading every chapter over and over again. Not all of these are positive experiences. But it's definitely more than ten. I lost count after fifteen. If I told you that had been about around the block a few times, you know, I... More like a, a, a walk or, or you ran around the block or, or laid and drove and stood around the block a few times. I was sowing my wild oats. Sowing, cropping, watering, sprouting, cultivating. You want me to say that I'm a whore? And a liar. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. I'm not an addict. Uh, then how would you explain it? I'm lucky. How, 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 how come I haven't been in there? Please. What? You don't want me to say? Say. Each entry represents a unique encounter with these women and with you, there's nothing I haven't already written. You're an asshole. You asked me and I wasn't going to lie. You don't get sympathy for telling the truth. I don't think less of you. You don't have to. I'm doing that all by myself. Well, even if we did something worth writing, there's a reason I wouldn't have put it into the book yet. This ought to be good. I wanted your entry to be our wedding night. Fuck! That was good. <laughs> and I didn't tell you about the book because, to be honest, if... If we broke up, what would be the point? I'd like to know if I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna be a chapter in some man's book. Then in that case, I apologize. It's weird. You have to know that. Doorbell buzzes. I'll get it. <laughs> Let me guess, another one of my exes? Pretty much. 
Excuse me? Francesca walks off stage. Are you serious, Francesca? She can't be serious. Francesca enters with Mary. Mary, you know Juan. And Juan, you know Mary. Mary, hi. Hello. If you could sit down. Everyone sits. So you haven't seen each other in how long? 15 years. That's a long. Nine months. Oh, OK. Eight days. Uh, I'm going to ask you. And 16 hours. Uh, do you have it by the second? No, that would be too much. Mary, uh, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And please reply with a question in your answer, OK? Understood. What is your name? My name is Mary. And your last name? I'd rather not. I have a warrant. How old are you? You never ask that of a woman. I understand. Where were you born? Do you really need all this information? It would help to have some kind of profile. I live in Queens. What do you do for a living? I'm a concierge at the Sher Sheraton. Where was the first time you met Juan? It was on a summer day at the hotel. He was staying there because he had a meeting with a shareholder who was also in the city for business. He was sitting in the lobby waiting to be called on. He looked nervous and anxious. He was the most handsome man I've ever seen. I kept staring at him to get his attention. After a while, I had to stop because my eyes were hurting. What did he do to you? I pretended to drop my pen on the floor and then I bent over in the front of him. It really doesn't work unless you have a big butt. Uh, so what was the next move? I was beginning to get hot when I used the vending machine to get me a Diet Coke. And would you believe I got two? Since he was also sweating, I walked over and offered him one. Do you remember that? Vaguely. I know you weren't feel, uh, really into me. That's not true. I know I came on really aggressive. A little. It was only because I liked you so much. I know, Mary. Mary, tell me about how you felt about Juan. Oh, does she have to? Shut up. It was love at first sight. I know he doesn't believe in that, but I do. You know, I think he was that close to falling in love with me. What do you think kept him from committing? I think it was because I asked for too much. Could you be specific? You know, simple things like wanting to spend a lot of time together, constant texting, marriage, and two kids within the next year. Stuff like that. Wow. The day I met all of his friends, I asked him to marry me. Really? But he said we were going too fast. Remember that, Juan? Remember how much that hurt? Okay, how about you tell me a bit about your affection towards him? You mean my clinginess? Uh, we could use your word. Juan isn't your ordinary guy. He takes really good care of himself and actually bathes once a day. He was fashion sense and sticks with a decision once it's been made. He's an amazing lover, also oh, present. So voyeuristic. So, so, so. I get it. <laughs> we once banged each other's brains out on a roof garden on top of a tanning chair. So I, so I read. Uh, we should move on. Are you embarrassed? <laughs> God, yes. I've never seen him act like this. You would think this film was going to be his, his wife or something. Mary, stop talking. He was dissatisfied with me. Well, except for the sex on the roof. I need to be excused. No. I heard that you purchased that exact property. Uh, you heard correct. 
I never got an invite for the opening. We haven't spoken in years. I know. I had to find out through your social media. Where is this building? You mean our building? <laughs> sure. Let's change the subject. It's on Grand Street. I have the brochure. How fucking lovely. While we were dating, Mary and I would walk all over the city and imagine different abandoned lot lots or empty buildings that could be my hotel. That site happened to be at a good price, and I kept it on my radar ever since. Yeah, it's like one big memorial for you. The roof doesn't even look the same. There are a lot of tanning chairs. This is really fucking nice. Hey, this was all your idea. I would like to say something. Any other memorials you've kept? No. Excuse me. Right, because you got them all in your book. I'm not going to fight with you. Hello? There's no way anyone could really know who you're with. You know me. This isn't professional. Uh, Oz, I need a breather. What do I do? What? Did, did he ever make you come? Yes, many times, darling. <laughs> Everywhere. Too many times to count. Mm. Are you still filming? I want this on film. Yes. Juan, I'm still... Still in love with you. Oh, what a shocker. <laughs> That's flattering, but I am with someone. Uh, me? Yes, Francesca. You with her? Yes, I am. But she's crazy. Oh, I show you crazy. I think it's better if you left. I need an answer. Mary, I don't feel the same way. But you wanted me to come here. That was Francesca's doing. I, I didn't even know you were going to be here, and Francesca is sorry. That's true? Yes, I'm sorry. This was mean. Well, in all fairness, th this wasn't meant to be a reunion. This was for the documentary. But I had, I had high hopes. Well, I don't know what to say. Well, surely you thought of me. What you and I had together was special. Was special. That time is gone. She looks like she can be your daughter. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Mary, go. Fine. That's fine. No skin off my nose. I'm okay. I have a boyfriend anyway. Two of them. Oh, I'm so jealous. You better be. Really? Her? Hey, you shouldn't be talking. I don't see a ring on your finger. At least I had one. You gotta be shitting me. That's not true. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Then what do you call this? Oh, that's fake. The ring is. But I love is it? The, the ring was something I won you at a carnival. We were joking around when we were saying we would marry. Remember, Mary? Jokes come from the truth, Juan. I'm not doing this anymore. You have to leave. Is that what you want or what she wants? She doesn't control me. So you're saying? Yes. Hello. I told you not to call me while I'm working, babe. I'll see you tonight. Wasn't that great? We should do it again. I'll bring my old bald and chain, and you can bring that. I'm not talking to anyone. I'm listening to you. You really know how to pick them. Francesca, we just really... You give 
rings to any old body. Francesca. And I, I, I don't care if you slept with every woman in New York in every single building, but you could have said something to me. I mean, I was ambushed with images of tanning chairs. Francesca! What? You got some nerve to talk to me like I'm the bad guy. How could you invite my exes here? My life isn't some film experiment. I'm not a subject or topic to be discussed. And maybe I lied about things, but I had reasons. What's yours for this? I don't think you understand how hard it is for a woman to trust a man these days. This is one big test. For us. Unbelievable. We survived it so far. I'm going to the hotel. This woman gave you her all, and yet you weren't interested one bit. We want whom we want. When I give you my all, what happens when you're not interested in me anymore? That could never happen. I, I get old, wrinkly, forgetful, and I talk on and on about how film has changed for the worse. Will you listen? I promise. No, no one can do that. Well, in that case, neither can you. Exactly. That's why I can't simply say yes without only so little information. Well, that's the risk. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know what to ask. This is childish. If, you, if you're having doubts, then they are of your own doing, and you could get through them alone. And who is that? We are two o'clock. Who? Let's find out, shall we? Francesca walks to the exit and Juan blocks her way. You need to tell me who this is. No, I don't. If this is going to make you decide about us, then I'll go through with it, but at least tell me who it is. You're afraid. I wasn't always a good man. Allow me emotional preparation. What do you mean you weren't always a good man? Oh, one time, I... If you just... describe a felony, it's over. I was drunk, and so was this woman, and she came on to me. I, I didn't have the balls to say no, but she didn't remember anything, and I felt disgusted since. Yeah, I read that in your book. Do you think less of me? I think you're a man. Anyway, she never replied back to me. So, who is this? Her name is Wren. You two had a weekend in Long Island. It seems like it was a fling, but according to your book, you wrote about how much she changed you. Remember her? In complete shock, Juan takes a step back. Ren isn't Ren, uh, a man, enters. Francesca sees him and her mouth drops open. All right. Francesca? Ren. That's me. Nice to put a face to the name. Oh, likewise. So? Take a seat. Ren sits. Juan. Hey. I'm not happy to see you either. Pause? <laughs> Are you seeing this shit? Um, <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my God. Okay. So please don't look into the camera and put the question into your answer. I run a marketing department. I know what to do. Great. What is your name? My name is Ren Harris. I'm 35 years old. I'm CMO of Global Paradisus Resorts. 
I have one son whom I adopted with my husband, Chris. We're getting married in a week. Congratulations. Thank you. If you recall, when was the first time you met Juan? It was through a mutual friend. I believe he was couch surfing at the time and had also recently went through a bad breakup. Mm. He told you this? He did. I forget the woman's name. I'm sure it's not important to the story. Uh, actually, it is. Oh, how? This woman was the love of his life, apparently. She had basically saw him for who he was and left him. Where did you exactly meet? At a bar. He was with our mutual friend and we hung out for the entire night. I had several spare tickets from work for a Jones Beach concert, I, I forget who, and I invited him. Um, what was your first impression of him? He's uh, painfully cute. <laughs> what else? And insufferably straight. What could you do, right? I wasn't against trying. We kept running into each other the next day. It was only a matter of time before I made my feelings known. You fell for him that fast? I did. I thought I could change him. Continue. He ruined me. I'm sure it wasn't that bad. Listen, I know you want me here to make him look good for this film, but that's not why I came. I have a lot of things I need to get off of my chest. Feel free. Juan is a selfish, he's a user, and manipulative. <laughs> we spent two days in a hotel room together. He went on about his ex and how she had broken his heart. But he wasn't complaining like a normal person, no. He did it with style. <laughs> he begged for pity and then tells you how hope for love will give him life. He said he was sorry and embarrassed for crying and would make up for it by allowing you to forgive him. I fell for it like an idiot. The oldest trick in the book and I fell hard. He was yearning to feel like a man again. He constructed reasons to stay with me. He made it all the way into my bed. The first night we were drunk. We woke up surrounded by takeout food and nearby tourist attraction pamphlets. Having promised him healthy distractions, we found ourselves on the beach following a deer that had come up to us. So we got ourselves between two houses and kissed. We lied to each other and said we were getting healing. At the hotel, we remained unclothed for the entire, for the next day. He told me about his family and I told him about mine. He told me that he felt alive again. I never told him was that I did too. He took the fear out of love for me. We made plans to meet in the city. Sunday morning, I woke up and found my wallet empty and the rental gone. Would you say that the events you shared with him were a result of his pain from a previous relationship? No shit. But you tell me, does it justify it? It's not for me to say. No one has an authority on love or etiquette of... I guess not. But actions speak louder than words. And to him, that was the only honest thing he has ever done. He's more complicated than that. He... Let's ask him. Is that true? Ren, uh, let's not argue. Are you incapable of morality? I'm not going to do this with you. That answer is no good. I felt really bad for what I did to you. You owe me a thousand dollars. I can write you a check if you'd like. I'm sure that would bounce too. I, I have to interrupt. Okay, let's, let's get back to why we're here. I don't care about your documentary. Pause. I'm losing control here. Okay, help?
Ren, why have you come? I, I have lots to say. Go ahead, Ren. You know what I don't get? What I keep asking myself over and over again, like a vinyl that skips in my head? Why did you run away? I don't know. Bullshit. It happened. Things don't happen, Juan. Did she call you back? No. Did I say something wrong? Never. Was it not what you expected? That's not it. Were you scared? Not with you. Were you ashamed? I'm not that kind of man. Y you know, I understand the curiosity, the need to explore and all that crap or, or the loneliness, but the sudden need to vanish from one's life without explanation is beyond my understanding as a human being. You didn't deserve that. You're fucking right I didn't. I opened my bed to you. I never lied while I was with you. Like I care. I'm not holding on to that weekend like treasure. It's a weight on my back. I've never in my life felt so worthless. I'm sorry. It's not a reason. But I am sorry. It won't do. Stop acting and tell him why you left. He deserves to know. You weren't good enough for me. I want my money. You know what, I got that on film. Now I could use something good for the trailer. Now before you go asking me a billion questions, let me relax for a bit. You'll be fine. Seems like nothing could wipe off that face of yours. I hadn't gotten out of a relationship that affected me, and and when I met Ren... I don't care. Francesca, it was a mistake. I could be one, too. You're taking everything and comparing it to us. You're right. It doesn't make it less factual. You can't answer all of these what-ifs. I saw a tortured man leave here with his dignity, something you took that he couldn't get back until today. You don't, you don't stay when the going gets tough. I've been with you through the difficulty of starting the hotel, spending time away, the pressures on me, the misunderstandings, your addiction, and this, your test. Have I passed so far? Barely. You still love me? I do. Do you want to marry me or not? Only say yes if you're certain. I may never know. Then forever I'll wait. I can't let you do that. Sure you can. I'm patient. And you're stubborn. You're impossible. And you're broken. They get close. Something comes over Francesca. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Marry me. No. S serious? But what made you change your mind? Do it before I s switch back. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, uh, but I don't have the ring. You bought one? Of course. Where is it? It's at the hotel. Who cares? Do it without it. Juan gets down on one knee. This isn't romantic. It doesn't have to be. Francesca, for my entire life, I have been... Oh, you have a speech? Oh, of course I do. Oh, my. Francesca, for my entire life... Oh, you wrote I... it yourself? Yes. When? I've had it for months now. Could I do this? Yes, I'm sorry. Francesca... For my entire life, I've been in search for my soulmate. 
As you now know, it's been quite a search for me. Today, I, I look at the woman who has turned me into the man I've always set out to be and, and who you deserve. It's a very long speech. <laughs> really? Sorry. No one, and I repeat, no one has ever made me feel how you make me feel. Never mind that. Keep going. I want to spend my entire life with you, every waking second, minute, hour, day. Thank you. You better speed this up. Francesca, would you marry me? Yes. They embrace and kiss. I'll tell her that it's been canceled. Well, I'm curious. So who, who is it? Honestly, I don't know. Only three confirmed. Quinn enters. Wow. Um, okay. I apologize, but uh, he's not feeling well. Juan bumps past Francesca and walks over to Quinn. They embrace. Uh, okay. Uh, let's all sit down. Juan and Quinn do not move. Am I going to have to get a crowbar? <laughs> Francesca walks over and separates them. She leads them to the chairs. All right. Quinn, uh, when you're talking, I'd like, to, I'd like you to look past the camera, OK? Only looking at Juan. OK. What is your name? <clears throat> uh, good enough. Uh, where were you born and raised? Here in New York City. I'm gonna need you to, I'm gonna need you two to concentrate over here, okay? Oh, right, <clears throat> sorry. We're ready. Francesca notices how closely they are sitting together. You don't have to sit that closely to each other. We know. I prefer it if you, if there is some space. Juan and Quinn adjust the chairs, but barely move an inch. What do you do for a living? You or me? You. Oh, I'm nervous. <clears throat> Never done anything like this before. It's all right, it's all you'll right. be fine. You'll be fine. Wait, I already said that. So again, what do you do for a living? I'm a kindergarten teacher. And what did you do before that? I was getting my MA. What? No hotel industry job? A manager? Critic? Or maid? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> do you recall the first time you met Juan? We were dancing. You met while dancing? It was at a church. <laughs> but we weren't there for the sermon. <laughs> so. <laughs> so we were both waiting in line to meet with the DA. Your crime partners. Uh, we would be terrible criminals. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got caught. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were we were participating in a program for warrant forgiveness if you had a minor offense the da would wipe it clean off your slate <laughs> yeah it, it was a way to keep from the lines getting too long at the courthouses Wait, and what crimes were you guilty of she was caught peeing in public right in front of a police car <laughs> he got drunk and wandered into central park after hours <laughs> <laughs> and the dancing. <clears throat> well, um, everyone was bored while waiting, you know, in line to see the DA. Uh, this little choir was singing gospel songs. They weren't any good. And so Swan here decides. I was standing in line right in front of her. That he was going to sing. As you know, that's something I don't do. <laughs> and he walks over to the choir and gets them to sing The Waiting by Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Then it was Waiting for the Day by George Michael and Waiting on a Friend by the Rolling Stones until finally he gets everyone singing Right Here Waiting by Richard Marks. <laughs>
<laughs> I take her hand and we sort of waltzed around. <laughs> yeah, we were each other's ever since. And, you know, <laughs> isn't that so disgustingly cute? <laughs> like an insect with a bow tie. <laughs> Some might say that's, that was fast. And I agree, we were stupid. Completely stupid. And we were warned by our friends. And family. We believed we were each other's soulmates. We were connected. We, we practically we finished, finished each, each other's sentences. sentences. <laughs> <laughs> How long were you two together? Um, well, six months. Um, my brother was in the VA hospital. Uh, he was suffering from PTSD, where he, he eventually took his life. Um, I had to go to California. I had to go to California when my parents retired, and I, I had to tell them. I got a job offer, and I also felt the West Coast sun hit me in ways I never felt. Well, my sister and her brother were a pair. Well, as you know, she was also at the clinic, and a week later took her life. So it was hard for Quinn and I to talk. Yeah. yeah. So I gave him an ultimatum, you know, like a teenage girl. I had purchased the site for the hotel. And this was? Before Mary, after Isla, and right before Ren. It's not written that way in the book. I wrote when I was emotionally able to. Pause. Let's hear it. <laughs> exactly. Um, so as the one who got away, did he propose to you? Is this still part of the documentary? Francesca, let's move on. Did he? What's going on? We're done here. I need you to answer the question. Okay. Are you with her? That's enough. Stop it. Thank you for being here and taking the time to do this. I, I know how you hate flying. I, I moved back. When? A few months ago. Well, I'm glad you're back. Yeah. Are you two together? We are. We've been dating for a year. She's sweet. What about you? <laughs> no. Well, that shouldn't take long. Okay, well, when it happens, it, it happens. Quinn walks over and gives her hand to Francesca. It was really nice meeting you. I, I hope this film turns out great. Likewise, and thank you. Quinn walks to the exit. She stops, she thinks, she exits. Are you sure that's it? No one else got back to me. I did get one message, um, but it was nothing but laughter, so I take that as a no. Oh, what are you thinking about? I had two other relationships besides you. One was my high school sweetheart who cheated on me with his best friend who I knew she was into him. You know what I learned from that? Juan leads them to the chairs. What? I learned to go with my instincts. That's a good lesson. My second relationship was with a local drug dealer. He was tattooed and had a scar on his face and long hair. He gave me an ultimatum. Break up with him or wait seven years until he got out of jail. <laughs> My relationships are an outcry of a little girl. Mine are of a little boy. You may have a long list, but you never wasted any time. That's what life is about. And somehow you're here with me doing that very thing. That isn't true. You're like a dog when you're around me. You, you wait 
around for me. You, you do stupid things like, like this, and you've convinced yourself that, that it's love? I love you because of how you make me feel. I treat you like an old man. I scramble around to meet your needs so I could get approval. That's not how I see us. How could you? You want this to work. And you? I want this to be easy. Every relationship has its flaws. And I'm not willing to deal with these. Right now, I'm acting like a child with a camera. So say it. Do I have to? Yes. It's over between us. Don't tell me that you don't want me because then I'll believe you. I need you to do exactly that. You're messing us up. Yes. Because then I'll get, I'll get to have me again. I didn't know that I was doing this to you. It wasn't on purpose. I, I really thought you were the one. Maybe I'll see you when your next boyfriend does a film on you. He exits. Okay, pause. <laughs> I learned something today. I mean, it's funny or, or maybe not funny or maybe a little bizarre. I mean, how something can happen in a moment that could affect your entire life. I guess I'm still too young to really get that. I don't know. Why did you propose? Because I wanted to feel. Feel what? You wanted to feel what it was like to be engaged. Yeah. yeah. Was it Quinn that changed something? Possibly. Francesca's phone rings. Trevor? Yeah. It's done. It was indescribable. It should have take. It shouldn't have taken. Uh, it shouldn't take. Sorry. It was indescribable. It shouldn't take long to edit. If your girlfriend is fine with you being here that late, then I'll see you tonight. Bring wine. Hangs up. Whatever you took from this. I hope you learned something. Francesca hits the camera off button and lights bump out. End of play. <laughs> Can we have all the actors back on stage and our playwright who is in the audience? <laughs> and, and as we do this, I would like um, to introduce the actors, um, if I may be so quietly, just so sort of like a I, uh, 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 end of, what is that? Oh my God, curtain is this last time at theater? A curtain call, thank you. <laughs> uh, so for Francesca, we have a what, Tame? <laughs> and for Juan, we have Ricardo Padilla. Yay. Uh, and as Isla, we have Leslie Ross. Bravo, bravo. And as Mary, we have Kiki Funches. Um, as Ren, we have Ahmad Mati. And as Quinn, we have Naomi Pruitt. Oh, let me turn on Naomi's camera. Yeah, <laughs> Naomi, turn on your camera, girl. <laughs> so I really want to thank everybody. Uh, you guys were awesome, despite some technical difficulties that we were having. Through this, you guys didn't even know what the technical difficulties were in the background, and you still just kept going. It was great. Um, I am going to uh, shut my mouth here for a minute and let the audience uh, talk if they would want to. I know, Barry, uh, you like to uh, weigh in, and Ian is here, and uh, Lori, Merrill, you all will want to weigh in, please. Please do so. 
Oh, well, let me introduce uh, Juan Ramirez Jr., our playwright. Please unmute. Let us know. <laughs> hey, hi everybody. I, I, I'm 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 loving this. I'm like I, it's always I that moment when it's like oh look it's the playwright and then it's like I got words to say but I don't because I'm absorbing all the love <laughs> and anyway but yeah I, I'm hi I'm Juan I'm the playwright. <laughs> I, this is great. I love it. Good good meeting everybody. <laughs> One is a, fil a former film student from NYU. Um, so it's not surprising that it took place in New York related to a film school. <clears throat> my little secret. <laughs> okay, well, uh, the obvious first question. Yeah. Is Don Juan you? Oh, that's hilarious. I love that. Um, <laughs> or are you Francesca? I, I, you know, maybe I'm a little both honestly mm -hmm. um it's funny because it came from because right my name's juan and my father's name's juan it's very latino family my grandfather's name is juan right it's like juan <laughs> writer don juan plays um and at first i didn't really have any interest to write about don juan right like like uh okay i'm gonna write a guy who's a womanizer and now he's sort of become this anti-hero lately i but what really interests me though were the exes or, 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 the, or the, the other women in the play right the ones who really have power, right? The ones who really demonstrate the power or who are trying to obtain or, or keep their power. And that interests me. So then I, I was also going through a period of like, let me try comedy because I'm known to be this dramatic person. So there's a lot of things happening. Um, but to answer your question, um, I think I'm, I think I can sometimes want to make light of stuff like Juan. I wanna, I wanna tell myself that hey, we're okay, everything's going well, you know. Just, let's enjoy the moment, be really present, right? And then I think at times I just get into this, this deep, deep thinking, right? Like Francesca, right? Like she, she just wants to. She, you gotta make sure, right? Like before I make this next move, I gotta be sure. So I think, um, I gotta say, I think I'm um, mix of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. good. <laughs> Uh, Juan, what do you think of your character? I mean, I'm sorry, uh, Ricardo, hello. What do you think of the character of Juan? I, you know, I like Juan. I feel like he's a lot of people. He's a lot of men that uh, maybe not uh, writing down all their stories, but uh, I feel like he's, a, he's somebody that I've seen before, you know? He gets emotionally attached to these people and then when he's done with that, he moves on. So I really liked a couple of his exes. So <laughs> I'm like, how did he get with Mary? Hmm, must have been <laughs> for fun. <laughs> but but uh, I think uh, he had a couple that really moved him and kept him from wanting to, to really settle down because he knew that there was heartbreak somewhere. He didn't want to get hurt. And so he didn't mind doing the hurting. It made him feel bad, but that's the way I look at that character. I really think he's a, like a lot of people we've come across in life. Yeah. Ricardo, yeah. why do you think all of his exes are so diametrically opposed from the other? Uh, well, there's uh, there's nothing like the variety pack, right? I mean, that's that. Why? Why did you are such a man? I swear to God. <laughs> I mean, Juan is not like me, but I can, I can really, uh, I can relate with him because, you know, uh, you, like me, I move, I've moved around a lot and you come in and out of people's lives like that. And they come in and out of your life. That's the way I look at these relationships with, with uh, his exes. They're just people that come in and out of his life. So do you think he, he felt like this was different or was that just the way to play her? Uh, well, you know, I, I'd like to say he wasn't playing, but he's probably going to get bored if he gets married. And then it's, then he's just like, well, I've done that. Now let's try divorce. Okay. <laughs> I mean, he, he, I don't think he will, I don't think he'd settle down. He will die alone. Mm. Doesn't mean he won't have girlfriends, but he, or I guess boyfriends. It depends on which way he goes the next time. But, uh, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, he's, I like that. I, I like character that characters like that were, so thank you Juan for making Juan. 
<laughs> it was very refreshing to see a character who is having a frank discussion about a bisexual relationship, but not racked with guilt, not destroying himself over it, not, no, it was just a matter of fact, like, okay, well, this happened. And right. it's a little more in line with how, you know, most of us experience that at different points in our lives. Um, whether you're in, whether you're uh, straight or, or not. So yeah, I definitely think he was m not upset about Ren. He was upset about the situation and how he treated Ren. And so, and then, you know, not telling him the truth of, of why. And no, leaving Ren without closure, I think is the worst for people with no closure. You go through the life, yeah. like he says, like, like uh, Ahmad said, as Ren, you go with that weight on your back. Mm -hmm. It ain't cool. Juan did bad. <laughs> there was one point that I was interested, found it interesting that it was when Ren was in there uh, that Francesca started defending Juan. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, why all of a sudden were you defending him? You know, when I would have thought you would have been uh, upset or something. But, uh, but it's like, you didn't like the way it was going, I guess. I mean, your character, you know, and so, and then that was before you did the pause. Mm -hmm. But I remember thinking, you know, why all of a sudden you would defend him, but. Oh, I thought she was defending Ren. Yeah. No, there was a point when, when Francesca was defending Juan because she was trying to say that she was saying, you know, he's not, she was like, she was trying to give him an excuse, like, oh, it might have been because of the state of mind that he was in, the previous person that broke his heart, and right, that right, might have right. been why he treated you badly. Um, but what I loved about that was that it, it was more about just a man um, treating, it wasn't about uh, him being, it wasn't about the focus, she wasn't, she didn't care that he was a man. That's what I loved about that moment. Mm -hmm. Like she didn't care that he was a man. She was just defending him. And she, she didn't judge, what I loved about Francesca is that she didn't judge his previous relationships with whomever, oh, that's true. whether it was um, male or female. Um, so I think that part was sort of the, 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 the depth of acceptance um, that Francesca was able to demonstrate. Um, because it was really complex because she's like, I, I still love him. You know, and I'm not going to let someone, you know, talk badly about my man, you know. Mm -hmm. I think in that, in that, yeah, at that point, she was still, so I think even after the fact, they, she would still be his friend or stay in his life somehow because of that moment, because she was, she came to his defense, you know. Yeah. There, there'll yeah. always be a, a, a part of her that will remain, you know, connected to him in some way. It also seems like Ren was the most hurt, like mm, the most yeah, emotional. He's, a, he's the one that, that yeah. gave the most emotion about how wronged he was. So yeah, that, that makes sense. So I've got a question for you then, um, Alette. Mm -hmm. Given that she's defended uh, Juan so clearly in that scene, and then continued on with the rest of, of through Quinn, and then at the very end, just breaks up with him. Just no, no rhyme or reason, really. I mean, really no rhyme or reason. She just says, hasta la vista, baby, I'm out. And, yeah. and, and where was the impetus to that? Why, why so all of a sudden, just so heavy handed? And then she calls up this guy, right? Bring a bottle of wine, tell your girlfriend you're going to be a little late, you know. Yeah. It's a booty call, but it might be a booty call, <laughs> right? Yeah. I think it was, it is, it will turn into a booty call. And I think uh, she's, I think she's the type of person that, that looks at everything from everyone's perspective because she even defended Ren afterwards to him. Like, how could you do that to this person? Like this man, like wasn't able to close, you know, that chapter in his life until this very moment. Like this is what you did to this person. So it's almost like so. So she sort of um, knows how to compartmentalize her own 
um, emotions about it all and like separates herself from the situation, you know? So in that moment, she was, you know, she knows how to be his friend and defend him if someone's trying to attack him, right? And then after the fact, she, she'll be like, okay, yeah, he, sh you know, I'm not gonna let somebody, you know, come at you some way, but you know, you were fucked up for doing what you did to this person too. So you need to learn, learn that lesson. You know, mm. so I think she's very, she is for a young person. I think she's very complicated. Deep. She's very complicated. <laughs> and then, yeah. and then she's like, and then she's like, anyway, I need some dick, you know, so like at the very <laughs> end, she's like, screw this. But it's it's so like, obvious though that, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's so obvious when Quinn arrives because the stage direction is that he pushes past Francesca to get to Quinn. And from there on out, his entire focus is yes. on Quinn. And Quinn can't take his eyes off of Juan. And Juan can't take his eyes off of Quinn. And he barely even recognizes that Francesca's in the room. They have this instant energy and connection and chemistry that cannot be denied. And that's why she breaks up with him. Yes. It's obvious. Yes, thank so you. So I don't well, know, where are you coming from, Mr. Director? I'm so the director yeah. too. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no, but I, well, but, now hold on. In my defense, uh -huh. I've got somebody who's backing me up here because the question comes from Ian. He says, I get the sense that Francesca wanted to break up with Juan and that this film project was her effort looking for an excuse. No, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Because she yes. got that black book long before this film. We, yes. we talked about this absolutely. long before. This was her retribution, is yes. my, pers my perspective. Yes. On it. Right. He was like, I'm going to screw another. him to the wall and catch him in every lie I can. Uh, what no. she didn't <laughs> expect, though, was the way that the exes would react when they came through that door. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you're so, you're so right. Um, uh, uh, Isla, what, I forgot your real, Leslie. Oh, wait. Leslie. Yeah, look there you on go. the screen. I'm sorry. I couldn't right see. There. Yeah, <laughs> Leslie. My bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, um, yes. You're, yes. And I think, I think that moment too was probably, uh, her being afraid to be vulnerable about her hurt feelings. So now, rather well, than, I, right. Yeah. So what rather I than ask the, the, hmm. the, the playwright is why does she um, at, at that point say just marry me just marry me before why does she do that that is a surprise to me so that's what i'd like to ask our playwright mm -hmm. sure no that's great that's great that's a great question um it's so i i'm it's, i almost feel like i'm saying everything everybody else is saying right but i think a big part of francesca and then putting you in my mind as i'm writing it my journey even writing the play is really like Francesca, it's like a coming of age story in a sense about love and it's her like obtaining her own power and I and I think there's something about the idea of Don Juan and he's this womanizer and which is just another meaning of power right but now putting the power in her hands and deciding as she goes along on this journey exes and testing him like you're saying and then deciding like well, you know what? I want to control this situation. I want to mm. control this. So I think there are moments in the play where like that, where it's like, you know what? Okay, fine. I did, we went through all this. I understand this. Okay, Ren, Isla, okay, this is... Okay, you know what? I don't know if I can take more. I think this is just enough. I think this is just... And her, and it's her really trying to take power. Um, Because I do think on. she loves it. I do think she loves him. Yeah, Scott, go for it. So why why does she mirror basically his antics towards the end there? And what's I don't know, and I and I, I hate to say it this way because I think I'm still discovering this about her. I I wonder how much similar she is to Juan. Mm. Mm -hmm. That even yeah. by the end, maybe she's kind of just like him, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's gonna be lead on that path just like him. And mm -hmm. this is sort of like, oh, Juan, I see myself in you. And I know what these games are like. And I could even join in on these games. And, but you know what? I, I can't continue these games with you, though. So that's What's the phone up, call to Trevor is her stepping in down <laughs> the same road. Mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a sense. And, and, I, and it's interesting um, for me, I'm speaking as a, play, as a playwright, when I was going through the journey, I didn't see that till after. Mm -hmm. So that's still even new for me. 
Um, so it's tricky for me to even explain now, but mm-hmm. but I think that's the idea that I that I, I believe I was trying to do because a lot of this was like the characters were talking to me. You know, sometimes you write a play and you sure. put the words in the characters' mouths. These characters were talking to me, and I think that's what's happened. I say mm-hmm. think because I'm so very digesting it myself. Um, but I think she's very much like one in many ways. Mm-hmm. I do. And this is her version. If there's no black book. It's film. You know, this is just her version. Hmm. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Who else has some some questions or some feedback they'd like to give? Anybody who's on mute, you can take yourself off mute. Jacob, Marika, Angelina, anybody? Send a chat, or send a chat notice. By the way, AJ, I can barely hear you. There was a lot of um, back and forth um, during rehearsals about this. Um, my take was that uh, uh, yes, I'm having all kinds of technical difficulties today. A little bit. Now I can hear you better. If she wasn't blinking her eyes, I think she was frozen. <laughs> I know, I know. My internet connection's awful. My computer crashed. It was a long story. So my take on Francesca is that when she found the black, she went looking for it. She found the black book. You didn't say that she discovered it. It just fell out of the laundry basket or something. So she found the black book. And then after that, she was hell bent to get all this down on film. She was going to document all of it. And everything she did after that was just for the film. In film school, nothing happens unless it's actually filmed. (laughs) And and I think this was her running him through the paces like, oh, really? 10? (laughs) I already have the book. (laughs) Your own words. (laughs) Don't lie to me. She knows already he's a liar and and he's been with all these women and from the start. Now she's just gonna take him apart on the screen for the benefit of the audience. This so, so then let me ask each of the actors in your, in your aspect of being one of the exes and, and being sort of paraded through by Francesca, do you, do you appreciate the fact that you get to have your say or are you really surprised? You know, like Ren takes, takes years of, of having that weight on his back and being able to get it all off his chest. Isla just sort of wants to have a quiet goodbye. Mary's the creeper. We all know that, right? (laughs) Um, Quinn is sort of this almost um, naive, virginistic type of woman. But at the end, she proves her real spirit by walking out. So from each of you, what what is your reaction to being asked to do this? Let's go with Leslie first. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, so uh, obviously we've been misled, right? We've been we've been told we've been we've come here to be a part of a documentary because we know this man, and you know I I am someone who builds buildings and I'm an architect, so I'm thinking well I'm going to be involved in the discussion of the design as well, right? So. I'm all heady and thinking that I'm going to participate in that. Um, and then it turns to our relationship. And so, you know, there's a, there's an, uh, I, I don't know if I played it that way, but I, but I wanted to come across, you know, as, as cocky, obviously, and, um, and insulting okay. to, to, um, to Francesca, um, because, you know, it's, it, who the fuck are you to ask me all these questions and to get into my personal life? in the way that you did and so and so you know this is none of your business so i'm actually going to say sensational things with the intent of throwing you off and (laughs) and 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 hopefully pissing you off at the same time and so some of the things that like when i said you know you're a pleaser i'm i'm hoping to be insulting and hurtful um you know because i don't care about her at all you know so there's a vindictiveness that comes back because you know who the fuck are you what? You know, to, to to involve me in your life to this degree, you know, where do you get off? You know, so, 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 I mean, I wasn't nice and I had no, you know, and if you really did that, if, 
if one of my exes did that to me and brought me, you know, kind of back into their story in that way, oh, snap, you know, it would not go well for you, you know? So, so, you know, yeah, that's basically how I would have reacted. I probably would have been a little nicer because I am actually a nice person, even though I always play the bitch. Um, but I am a nicer person than the characters. But anyway, um, um, but then, you know, given the chance to, to be on camera and say goodbye to him and have, you know, the, to talk about the cancer and everything. And I know Scott cast me because I've had cancer. So that was personal for me, you know, and able to pull from that. Um, you know, so she took advantage of that. That's not why she came. She wasn't expecting to, to do that, you know, but that was just something that in my mind that she took it, uh, the opportunity because it presented itself to say goodbye to him. So I don't think she intended to do that. You know, I think it was just something that because she was there, she could. Mm -hmm. So that's my take on it. I don't know if that was what the playwright intended, but that was my take on it. So Mary, what about, or Kiki, what about you? <laughs> there was a twist that a lot, I think a lot of people probably didn't know. That Juan, when Juan was, was with Mary, nobody knew that Mary was actually a transgender woman. Yes, so one, girl. One likes a variety, the spice of life. Apparently mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. Right, Juan? Like you got it, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> and do you notice how she did that so succinctly? She just like, in two sentences, wrapped up the entire character, right? Like that. Mm -hmm. Just brilliant. Thank that you. Confidence, yeah. Ahmad, what about you? I um, I enjoy the fact that all of the characters in the play have like their own character flaws and their own issues that they're dealing with. Because like, who who is any human being to want to change another human being? Like who who feels like it's okay or thinks that it's okay to want to change? I thought I could change him, right? Like mm -hmm. that. Um, and of course, that's something we all do at one point or another. Is that we feel like we could really fall deeply for this one person and we could change them. And so I, I appreciate the fact that all of the characters in this, in this play are flawed. Um, and um, as far as, as far as Ren, I, I think it's hard at the end because he already felt worthless. And then to get validation that really he, he wasn't enough good enough for, for Juan makes the worthlessness kind of stay, makes it a fact, makes it true, right? But, but doesn't the fact that he's going home to a, a, a life with a family and a husband and oh. anything add to his feeling not worthless? Oh, no, oh, yeah, I think absolutely, I, I think so. I, I, I think that there is, I think you, we're multifaceted people, right? So we have sure. all these different dimensions and all these different doors to our life and some doors are larger than others. and some are, you know, smaller, and some you have a whole lock and key on <laughs> that'll never open again. And I think this is one that <laughs> is locked, but like constantly wanting to go into. And I think that he, um, uh, though his, his home life is great and reassuring and loving, I don't think he has closure. I think that for him to be this angry about, about this and for him to be angry enough to, to punch him or, or to be f physically, you know, um, aggressive or upset with him. I think that there isn't closure there. I think you, and I think you can still love somebody and still not have closure with past relationships. Right. Um, I think, I don't know. Um, <laughs> luckily I don't know. Um, so I pray you never have to know either. Thank you. I'm, I'm making sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, I gather that that is something to not have closure for so long on something and then to get this kind of, this kind of closure is, is still maddening in a way. So I feel like he's driving back home just as pissed as he was when he was coming on over here. Mm. Right? Wow. And maybe along the line, mm. years from now, when his relationship is more settled, if that becomes a thing, um, 
that he'll find closure through lots of therapy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I am all for therapy, trust me. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so what about you, Naomi? So, you know, this is my <clears throat> first time doing this, so it's still really, really nervous. <laughs> um, uh, well, Quinn obviously has had some things go on in her life that affected the way she views relationships, um, family dying, taking their lives. I mean, I've, I've dealt with that personally myself, and it does change a person and your outlook on things and how you want to handle things going forward. Um, so it seemed to me like, like when she first saw Juan, it was kind of like, the instant like good times. Like I remember those good times. Like that's, that's kind of what you hold on to when you're not with somebody you, you want to be with. You don't remember the reasons why you broke up and all that kind of stuff right away, you know? So I think that when she first sees him, she's like, oh, oh my God, the love of my life. Like, oh my God, this is really happening. Like, what? you know, and then they, they both are just kind of like, we're in this room together. Like what, you know, and they just start going back and forth. Like you said, forgetting about Francesca's even there. And I think at the end, when she realizes that he's with, she realizes that he's with Francesca, I think those memories of why they broke up start coming back. And it must have been something really hard because nobody really knows the, the reason why. Nobody will say, right? So they're both just, just want to like forget it. Like, I don't even want to think about this anymore because it hurts so bad. Um, so when she goes to tell Francesca, like, goodbye, and I just, I remember, and I can't do this, and you're sweet, and I really hope you do well with this, because you're a good person, and Juan can be a good person, <laughs> but I just, I can't, I can't do this. And when she goes to leave, and she goes to think, I feel like she might want to tell Francesca something, or maybe even Juan, maybe she wants to get something off her chest, but then she's like, you know what? I gotta, I, I move past it for, for however long, I have to keep moving past it. You know, I, as a kindergarten teacher also, you know, you, you learn a lot, you learn patience, you know, you learn how to deal with other people's parents and be patient with them. So adults who are also can be children because of their children. And <laughs> so I think she just got the courage again to just get up and walk out even though she probably does have a little bit of regret. Okay. I feel like I said a lot, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, was that great. was good. Um, I do want to read a comment from, uh, from uh, Merle Berg to everyone that said, I enjoyed the play very much and equally enjoyed the actors talking about the play. So oh. we want to thank Merle for that because um, the sticking, I think they always think the sticking around part at the end and being able to talk to the actors about all of this is really, um, really good especially when you got the playwright right because you sort of feel like you can get in there and 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 really feel what the act not only the playwright is saying but what the actors felt like the playwright was saying right um there was a there was a musical once about janice joplin um this woman um was a one woman show type thing and we got to talk to her a bunch of us after the show and we got to figure out how she got into that character and it was so amazing how she just really lived that whole thing. Um, and so um, I feel like you guys have taken your characters very seriously, even over just the past week, and have looked at them and analyzed them and said, you know what, this is how this person is. Despite whatever Juan wrote in the beginning about what those characters are like, you guys really made them your own. And I really appreciate that fact. And you were very helpful to me as a director to be able to come to the, to the plate ready to go like that. It was really, really good. Um, I would cast any of you an, again in a moment for, for anything coming up. So absolutely. <laughs> well, uh, th thank you guys. It's just about 841 here on the East Coast. I don't know where all of you are, but um, so I'll cut you loose and uh, thank you all so much. And uh, thank you Juan for making amazing play for us to, to spend thank some time. You. Yeah. I wanna, thank I you. Thank you, Owen, Ricardo, Leslie, Kiki, Ahmad, make sure I'm getting everybody, Naomi, Scott, AJ, this is like, it's, it's like what Scott said, you guys took it, you own it, and as I'm, I was sitting here like, 
it, it, it it's just so dope when you do that and actors do their thing especially now online i love this stuff thank you, thank you. and it helps thank me because i thank i got you. some notes and, and i go back and I, i love it thank you guys really 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 thank good. you thank, thank you for sharing your art with us we thank really appreciate you for it my first time thank you. doing this like amazing i really really enjoyed this i didn't think you know i just kept telling scott i'm like i'm not an actor i'm not an actor but yes, yes you are. Really it's such a natural <laughs> you yes, are now that's your natural, natural. right yeah. You popped your cherry, girl. Yes. You popped your cherry. <laughs> well, Thank you for and, being and, there, Leslie. And, and, and look All right, everybody. Guys. I love you. Yeah, Much love. Good Take night. Care. Thank you, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, guys. How do I stop this? <laughs> okay, I'll see you down there, Scott. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, AJ. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank I you. That. I know. Please. Thank you for thank you for being patient with me, dealing with my crazy weekend I've had. I appreciate. It. I wanted to say that first, but this was though. I was watching. This was. This was. I couldn't help it. I was. I was doing half my orientation. I just checked out and I was watching. <laughs> I might get in trouble. Whatever. This was. It was worth it. I got to say, it was worth it. But thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> for sure. And please do bring us back more work. Um, awesome. you're, yeah. Once you're a writer for the Quarantine Players, you can come back anytime with new work. You want to hear it. It doesn't have to be broadcast if you don't want it. You can, we can arrange a private reading. Um, oh, okay. You'll hear from me. <laughs> hear well, from I'm me a writer sure. too, so I know. Okay. <laughs> right. Awesome. Enjoy. Oh, Take care. Um, share, can I share my, um, I, I want to like connect with the actors on the, like Facebook, IG, just yes. to send me stuff. Okay. I, 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 I know you. Tell them yeah, um, sure. Well, me, are, you, are you... Them. Are you part of the quarantine players group? Did I add you? I don't know. I oh, will I add know. you. We have a private Facebook group that has. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. brilliant. That's, yeah, and yeah, it has 150 mind. people in there. So there's okay. directors and actors. Feel free if you want to cast. We have lots of actors in New York City. So. Yeah, because I love them. They, they were like, and, and, and you re you were right. They really are these characters. It was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Like in a great. I was like, oh wow, this is. It was really cool. That was just dope. It was really cool. Kiki <laughs> is is by far my is is just. I adore everything she does. She's been in other things, and she just brings that. She reminds me of of the character in Pose, the the famous trans actress. Mm -hmm. uh, gosh, I can't think of her name for the life. I, I'm guilty. I still haven't seen it yet. Everybody's yelling at me to watch it. I still haven't gone down to see. I know, I know, AJ. I know. I still haven't. I know, I know, I know, I know. I have to watch it. Dear God, I hope you're straight. Because <laughs> if you're gay, that's an unforgivable sin. Yes. I, 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 yeah, but regard, I say regardless, I have to watch it. Yes. I am, but I have to. Yeah, yeah. I've been. Everybody's yelling at me. Everyone yelling at me to watch it. Yeah. I will. I will. It is uh, the first season's on Netflix. Please do. Um, it yeah. We we have a very strange theater company. Like we just like like you can tell. Like we we actually my original cast. We um we actually started had to replace some of them not for scheduling stuff, not for anything bad, and so we just ended up with this. It, this fell together like by Sunday. The cast. Wow. Yeah. It almost seemed planned. I got to tell you because it's like they just. That's really cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's so. Uh, let me not keep you right now. We got to right. hear. We got to hear the, our next two. Whoever's gonna talk, and uh, we'll see how this debate goes. Oh so, goodness gracious! Yeah, I, don't know I have my drink. <laughs> Start drinking now. It'll, it'll yes. be much better if you don't approach the sober. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, again, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'll reach out. Definitely add me. Yes, and I'll, I'll, you'll hear from me. Thank you again. Okay. This was, was okay. Cool. Take care. <laughs> bye. -bye. bye. Thank you.